Kate Worm. I'm in Cheap Joe's filming studio today to talk a little bit about making a figure painting using watercolor and gouache. We'll do some unique things with materials and uh, the things that I've developed for fun, I guess you could say, over the years. And, uh, but we do have a live model, and this is Robin, who I brought with me. And I've been working with Robin for about six years at the Hickory Museum of Art, where I work part-time as an educator, and run an open studio there on Monday nights with a model. And Robin has been our regular now for about six years. We had other models before her, and occasionally we will get another. But a big part of the success of the program is um, setting the model up in an, in an environment with color notes and getting her placed and so forth. Now, in the open studio, we work in the round, and uh, so, but in this particular case, I can pick and choose just where I want to place my easel in relation to her. We have a beautiful settee or chaise, a uh, nice, uh, beautiful neutral color, which will enhance her, her brilliant costume. We hung a, a little bit of a color note behind her there just to break up the white. And uh, when we set a model, there's no rule about how how to put the lighting, but uh, I like dramatic lighting. A lot of portrait painters don't. They like soft lighting, and so this is sometimes a debate in the open studio as to what kind of lighting we will have. But I personally, personally like a dramatic lighting. And uh, Caravaggio in art history, of course, is famous for his very dramatic lighting on his scenes. And they, uh, I've read recently that he has influenced Hollywood more than any other one uh, artist in art history, and uh, I will say that I watch Law and Order because of the dramatic lighting. So, uh, anyway, I uh, I like to have the light. This is not a rule, but I often place the light somewhat behind the model. And uh, working with an unclothed figure, obviously for this setup, Robin is wearing a slip. But we work with unclothed models, and generally the torso tends to be the point of interest and so I want that dramatic lighting on the breast area and so forth. Uh, it, it, this is a general sort of statement and uh, we've set this up behind her now. We've slightly behind her. We've looked at other possibilities over here. Again there's no rules about this. It's just what you like but I like the cast shadow from behind. You see this lighting here creates a very nice shadow over in this area, which really helps the composition. Once we get moving and we think we have Robin set up the way we want her, I, uh, it's, I call it taping her down. Now, uh, in most open studios, they will put tape or something to indicate how they want her arms and legs and so forth. But we're going to have the additional tool of a little eyebrow pencil to help. But let me make sure that, that she is in, in a good position here. Um, Robin, bring your right leg over this way, to your right. Or, or just move it like that? No, no, the foot. Yeah, the foot. And can you bring that left foot further? There you go. Yeah, there you go. More like that. All right, now bring your left knee back toward the side of the piece. Yeah. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to... I, I'm trying to uh, sight that shadow that wraps around her thigh above her knee that gives me a nice sense of round on the form. And then I have a similar sense of round here on her. So that's nice. Now, uh, Robin, let's see, put your, how are you going to put your head? When possible, I like to have a twist in the model. Um, it's nice if you can have the shoulders slightly distant from the, slightly changed from the hip, the angle. Uh, in this case though, the, uh, the shoulders and the hips are pretty much straight on and uh, we're asking her to turn her head to a different angle. Now look at me Robin. Drop your chin a little bit. Alright, that's pretty static. Look over this way. That's not bad. Um, but let's look back over this way and drop uh, no, no. I think about like that. That's good. And let's see now about the hands. Can you put two fingers up instead of one? Yep, yeah, there you go. There you go. Put three fingers up there. 
There you go. Now oh, that looks like a claw. That's not good. There you go. Yeah, is that comfortable for you? We like Robin to be very comfortable because she'll be sitting here for three hours with a break every 20 minutes. And uh, we don't want our paintings to look pained and labored the way a model would if she were uncomfortable. So do you feel like you're, you're pretty comfortable? Now, if uh, Robin needs a little break, something goes to sleep, then she'll say, I need to stretch. And that's abs absolutely fine. OK. So now I'm going to taper down, as we say. I have a piece of tape on the settee here, and I mark on her pretty little foot a line to line this up. So when she comes back, um, she'll be able to have her foot in about the same place. Now there always will be a little bit of change. It can't be helped. And you just adjust. And I mark, I mark on this side so Robin can see, but for the sake of the viewer, I will also mark here. Robin doesn't really need that because she can't really see it anyway. But you can see how I put a mark on her. And shall I mark you here? Yes. I mark her body parts. where that leg hits the other leg. Now, what, will I, what am I going to do about this hand? How will I mark that? Yeah. Mark All right, I'm marking her little finger against her thigh there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. <clears throat> and I'll put this up here. OK. And I don't know, do we need to mark that finger, do you think? No, maybe just put the tape there. All right, I will mark this finger. All right. And then right. I need my upper arm. OK. So I'm sure Robin's family is quite amazed when she gets home at night and sees little marks all yeah. over. It's like, what have you been doing? <laughs> all right, let me, I'm going to pull this right. a little bit down. Like, well, okay. when you come back, that'll be all right. I'm going to mark her back. I'm glad you brought this eyebrow pencil. So. It's very helpful with an experienced model for them to have the capacity to get back in generally the same place. Um, first time models, they might be, they might sit like statues, but be totally confused when they come back and see this array of tape and marks and trying to remember how their body went. And I think that'll do it, don't you, Robin? I think so. I need to set the timer. Robin's been seated now there for about five minutes, so I'm going to put this to 15. We work in 20-minute segments. Not only does the model need a break, but the painters do too, because when you're working against a clock, it's an intense experience, and you need to just be able to look away and shake out a little bit so you don't lose your focus. <clears throat> Can you drop your chin just a little bit? And a little bit more to your left, slightly more. There you go. Is there anything for you to stare at over there? Uh, so you can. No, I'm good. OK. I'm good. I always use a viewfinder, even though I've been painting for years. This is one that Cheap Joe sells. I make my own, though. Um, we, we can talk about that another time. This is Quick Comp. It's a tic-tac-toe grid. And I hold it up and look through with one eye, one eye closed, one eye open, and think about how I'm going to place her. Will she be more to the right or more to the left? 
And uh, so I'm seeing here now that her face, I, I actually tell my students to do this uh, in a tactile sort of way. Please touch the paper where you're going to place. All right, so I have a head here, and the shoulders maybe here, torso coming slightly at an angle. Oh, let's get her a little more in the center, yeah. Then that knee sweeping off here, something like this, and then the elements of the settee around her. So she's uh, been set and marked. We have adjusted the lighting. If I were in an open studio, we'd try and please everyone, which is hard, but we would make an effort at that. And uh, the timer has been set, and so we'll, we're ready to begin the painting.